welcome to Connect, a program where we explore our connections with the community. Typically, we invite two people for a conversation about a specific topic and to share their link with the community. We hope that through our conversation, you at home will be able to explore your connection with the topic, our guests, and our community. With me are Jen Hooker and Jeannie O'Grady, both from the Scotts Valley Library. And uh, Jen, why don't we start with you? Could you share a little bit about your background and why and how you became part of the Santa Cruz Public Library System? Of course. Um, my name is Jen Hooker. I have been a librarian for two years. I got my master's degree in 2015 in library science, uh, which you do actually have to have to be a librarian. Um, I moved to Santa Cruz to attend the university as an undergrad got my degree in film and digital media, and then attended San Jose State for my master's. Um, I started working for SEPL in 2010, thereabouts, um, and I worked my way up the ranks, and now I've been a librarian up in Scotts Valley for a year and a half, two years, and it's been great so far. I get to do a lot of fun stuff. Great. How about you, Jean? Well, I've been a librarian for a lot longer than Jen. <laughs> um, I got my degree in, I can't remember when, but I moved to Santa Cruz in um, 1997 to take a job at the, Scots, at the Santa Cruz Public Libraries. Um, I was the first youth services outreach librarian. And um, so when I came here, my job was to develop outreach programs for children and youth in the Santa Cruz, greater Santa Cruz community. Um, before that, I was a middle school librarian oh, wow. in Ohio. Oh, great. <laughs> so, but I grew up in, in Salinas, so coming back to Santa Cruz, to California, was coming home for me. All right. So you already mentioned that you've been working you know, with the community, doing outreach. So what kind of the programs are there in, in the outreach uh, department? Because I think it's quite large, right? Extensive. It is. There, um, there are lots of things that we do as outreach. We have a bookmobile, which we're on our second bookmobile since I've been here. Um, the new bookmobile arrived in June of 2016, and the previous bookmobile was on the road for 18 years, which was just about, it, it came just after I came to Santa Cruz. It was already ordered and you know, it's a big deal to order a bookmobile because you have to have you have to have it that suits the terrain that you're going to be driving on, which is difficult in Santa Cruz. There are a lot of windy roads and things like that. So, um, well, we yeah. have actually some pictures of uh, of the bookmobile. Why don't okay. we show some of those? Yeah. And uh, the one that uh, we have right now that's the second one. That's our second that's one. The second mm -hmm. one, yeah. Um, and it's it's quite different actually from the first one that I worked on. It, uh, the other one was more a van-like. This is actually a truck. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so you go, the, the bookmobile basically, I mean, it says it already, the book is, <laughs> you know, the books it's, are being brought to people in the community and you have several stops. Several, yes. Uh, currently we have 27 stops wow. and it goes on a rotation of two weeks. Um, so all but, all but four of those stops are every two weeks. The other four are what we call library hours. And we go to um, communities uh, where, uh, senior communities, and take books into them just like we, just like a regular library service, like the bookmobile. We bring them books. We bring them their requests. Mm -hmm. um, they can check out books for at, at the library hours it's for four weeks mm -hmm. at the bookmobile it's for three weeks but we come back every two weeks that's correct yeah. yeah and so jen do you have any involvement with the bookmobile i don't have a ton of involvement with the bookmobile itself um but i am a trained writer of our book bike uh, oh. whose name is kermit <laughs> and we have a picture of that and too. we do have a picture of that yeah, yeah. um he's bright green and Kermit's purpose is to serve closer communities that we aren't reaching um, by vehicle or individuals who come into the branches. 
So Kermit goes to farmers markets um, all over the county. Um, he goes to um, different festivals and fairs in the downtown area, yeah. like um, Ebb and Flow, or the. It's involved in all the parades. So this was installed maybe a year ago mm -hmm. that we got Kermit officially. And there's a group of people who are capable of writing it, and we fill it up with books, and we take it anywhere we can pedal. That is crazy. And you can also sign up for a book, uh, a library card at Kermit. Yeah. Or yeah. use your library card that you already have and check it out. Yeah, it's got all the capabilities. We have um, Wi-Fi pods that we take with us. We have laptops, iPads, um, anything that you would need to look up a book, check out a book, we have contained in Kermit. That's remarkable. Yeah. Now, I'm familiar a little bit with the bookmobile because it comes to my senior community. And, um, you know, it's just on Tuesday's afternoon, you know, it's just for about a half an hour. But it's really a coming together of the people in the community. We, we have another opportunity to just interact with each other and with Eric and Dave, and Dave uh, who are on the bookmobile. And, of course, you happened to... I do don't get before. to go on the bookmobile Not anymore. anymore. <laughs> but it was one of, one of the great pleasures of my job when I first started. Yeah, you know, like I said, it's, it's a community building for us in the community. And, of course, people read more books. And then what I notice is that at some point, either Eric or Dave takes a bag with some books in it. And then I thought, oh, where are they going? <laughs> but anyway, they went to one of my neighbors who, you know, has a hard time coming to the bookmobile. I mean, the bookmobile comes to people who have a hard time going to the library. But even then, they take a bag with books that somebody had ordered and actually take it to the home. That's right. And... Um that's called our Book Buddy program. Mm -hmm. We um, generally have volunteers who are taking, selecting books and taking them out to homebound patrons. And they do that generally on a once a month basis. But um, so if you're interested in volunteering for the library, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. You can call the volunteer office or get, um, go onto our library website and get information um, about volunteering. And that's not the only volunteer <laughs> opportunity that right. the library has. We have a lot of volunteer opportunities. We'll, we'll take volunteers for just about anything. We love our volunteers. We have at least 100 volunteers throughout the system, um, anywhere from cleaning bookshelves to shelving books to helping us with programs. Um, and we're always looking for new volunteers. So if you like working with kids, if you like doing arts and crafts, if you like just you know, spending some time in the garden. We have gardens at some of our libraries that need tending, so That's really great. anything that you might be interested in. So you have a lot of interactions with, with people. Now, uh, any stories you want to share of interactions you had either on the bookmobile, uh, you know, the bookmobile goes to schools too, um, uh, camps, I think they're going to go to some of the camps. Some right? of the summer camps, um, not actually. Well. We used to go to schools occasionally because often the communities at, or the actual schools don't have libraries or they don't have library staff. But um, more often than not, we go to community centers and um, neighborhood locations. And the, it's the neighborhoods and the communities that we meet um, most of our children patrons. Um, I used to go to uh, Neary Lagoon mm -hmm. with the bookmobile. And um, that involved not only the kids coming out to the bookmobile and checking out books, but in the library got involved with their homework center there. And we were um. able to offer them um, books that they could keep in the center for the kids to use for homework, homework help. We also have... Um, deposit collections at a variety of places where the bookmobile doesn't go, mostly preschools, where um, the teacher or the people who are handling the, the program take uh, give us a list of things that they would like to be studying in the next month or two, and we'll pull books for that and take them, and they, they keep them at the center so that... Um, 
the children have access to them and the teachers have access to a wider variety of materials than they would normally have in a uh, in a child care center. And how, how do those kids respond? They love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's an opportunity for them to um, use that as, as and as some, many of the centers that we go to, not necessarily with depo deposit collections, have, um, are involved in a program called Raising a Reader. And they have book, book bags that the parents check out once a week for, I think, 12 weeks. And then to get them used to borrowing books and reading books at home and working on their early, early literacy things. And then when they um, graduate from that program, they bring the kids to the library. And we do a, a raising a reader visit with all the young kids. And this is preschool children. And they, um, at that point, they get their library card. And they get um, another book bag, a different color book bag that's theirs to take home and use when they come back and forth to the library. And um, when I used to work at the Live Oak branch, there were a whole bunch of kids who came in, older kids, you know, third, fourth, fifth grade, who came in with their little blue Raising a Reader book bag, and yep. they were still using it. They'd gotten their library card when they were in preschool, yeah. and they were still using that bag. That's cute. And that also, of course, helps to, uh, to keep the books that's where they keep their <laughs> library books, exactly. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, Jen, yeah. you you work with uh, CCF. Yeah. Tell us a little about that. Yeah. So CCF is our County Correctional Facilities Program uh, that was started maybe two years ago, uh, right right after I started working as a librarian. Um, and what that is is sort of an extension of the library hour that Jeannie talked about. So we take a collection of books, and it started at the main correctional facility downtown. Um, and we take maybe eight crates of books that we've selected, and we take them into the jail. And we sign the uh, incarcerated individuals up for library cards if they don't already have library cards. And they can check out books, just like a regular browsing collection. Um, that was very popular when it started, because up until then, the reading material in the facilities was pretty much a bunch of raggedy um, paperbacks that had been in there since the 80s. Um, and we were able to bring more, more relevant, more updated uh, materials to them. Do they request? Uh... Yes, so they can request items. Um, and there aren't any uh, limitations as far as the type of material they can request. So whether it's self-help books or um, religion or spirituality or cooking or anything. Um, and that program was so popular, we extended it to the Roundtree facility out near Watsonville. Um, and that is a, is a lesser security facility, so mm -hmm. they have a little bit more um, maneuverability within the facility. And we also have, um, out of that came a reading group. Um, in the facilities, so both Maine and Roundtree had their own. They, they, the inmates or the incarcerated people themselves organized themselves. No, so this was something that we brought into oh, okay. them. Um, one of our librarians who's very involved with this community, um, she got a training from a, a grant that she wrote, and she takes short stories into the facility. Um, they have a group of inmates who, uh, if they want to participate, can participate. And they either she reads the stories or they take turns reading the stories and then they discuss the, the short stories. So I was involved with that program at Maine Facility mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, it's still going at Roundtree. So it's been really popular and, and it gives a little bit of um, different perspective uh, in the facility. Excellent. Um, and does it, does it help them to continue to be readers, possibly even do GED and things like that? Do yeah. you see any effects I, of that? I think a lot of them are involved in, um, I guess, embetterment programs. Mm -hmm. um, 
whether or not they have um, their GED or their high school diploma or any sort of higher education is something they're still interested in. Um, and I think that helps with their release as well, mm -hmm. if they're involved in these programs. Um, and then out of the adult facility programs, I was given the opportunity to start a outreach program at the juvenile hall facility in Felton. Oh, that's terrific. Now, I think we have a couple of pictures with you. Yeah, in the yeah. yeah. Because of the sensitive nature of uh -huh. it, we aren't allowed to take pictures inside the facility mm -hmm. um, because they're minors, of course. Um, so we took a few book, a few pictures outside. Uh, outside. <laughs> yeah, we have our, our library vehicle that we take with us. We uh -huh. do a similar thing to the adult facilities. We load it up with books that we have chosen for um, for patrons. They can make requests just like they could on the outside. Um, and the nice thing is, when we give them library cards, once they leave, their library card is available to them anywhere in the county. So they can take it with them and have unlimited access to all library facilities just like you and I would. So, And I must say that uh, right after we started doing this, I had a patron come in to the library with a rating of the, re raising a reader visit. So it was a mom and a little child. And um, she had she didn't ha I can't remember she had her library card with her and um it was the first time that she'd used it after being released from incarceration wow. so she was she was just wow this is so cool because her little child got a card yeah. and she had her card and they could both check out books yeah yeah, and the the juvenile facility has limitations on what we're allowed to bring, mm -hmm. um, and those are imposed on us by the um, program administrator for the county, not by us, because we don't restrict library <laughs> materials. Um, but we do work within the confines of that, and we try to bring them, you know, whatever they want as much as they can have. Um, and I've been doing that for more than a year and I've got to say um, it's been interesting to see some of these kids uh, grow mm -hmm. and and sort of flourish because they don't have a lot to do no. when you're you know locked up um, so it's definitely one of the one of the finer parts of my job is to do that on a regular basis to see that growth yeah 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 it touches you yeah it does. oh absolutely yeah now you also work with the k-12 outreach I do. Um, the state of California, actually, in California um, State Library, has a program that uh, we are part of to get library cards to all school age children in the state. And um, our our part, of, we've always at Santa Cruz um, done what we call well at the beginning of the year, gone out to the high schools and the middle schools and um, gotten library cards for them at those, um, at that state. Many of the kids do already have library cards, but they... Because you caught them at the, at the Raising a Reader. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Well, the, even before Raising a Reader, we were doing this. But um, they haven't used them for a variety of reasons or... They and one of the reasons that they haven't used them is because they're blocked because of fines. Yeah. Oh. Um, so at these um, library card extravaganzas, when we go to the school, we do forgive the fines for the ones that um, haven't. And and also many of them have just a book that they've forgotten to bring back, and that you know, gets us over the threshold of fines so yeah. that their card are blocked. So if we just remind them, we get a lot of those books back. Yeah. It's very surprising. Oh, yeah. gee, I have that library book at home. Hmm. Yeah. So well, do you have some f forgiving days or something that, that every once in a while you say, bring um, your books back? I remember a couple of years ago. We have in the past. We I don't think we have one. Food for fines. Food for fines. In the past. Oh, yeah. Um, where people can bring in canned or um, non-perishable goods. Mm -hmm. And we will waive fines accordingly. Um, 
I don't think we did it last year, but no, we've definitely done it. Quite we have a few done years it in, in the past. I, you know. Yeah. Well, I thought it was pretty smart because I read in the paper that you got a whole bunch of books back. We did. So that yeah. was worth it. Yeah. yeah. And and it brought, of course, people back into the library where you want them, yeah. or yeah. you know, at the bookmobile yeah. or Kermit or whatever. Yeah. And and our focus, um, on for the K twelve outreach this year anyway is to get first graders to get library cards. And um, one of the ways that we're doing that is we're trying to either visit the classroom or have the first graders, first grade classes come to the library. And when we have those scheduled visits, um, we will do a, a story and tell them about the library. If they're actually in, the, in our library branches, we can give them a tour and do a little bit of, of um, information about what the kinds of books that they might be interested in getting. And then we... Is it mostly books? Uh, are, do we see a trend of more towards videos and CDs? And so I don't know if the, the younger ages are necessarily into renting CDs and DVDs, which we do loan. Um, but we do have a ton of databases that we pay for. So yeah. normally if you tried to get access to a certain website, you would hit what's called a paywall. Um, and through the library, if you use your library card, you bypass the paywall because we're the ones paying for it. So they have mm -hmm. access to tons of educational resources that they would otherwise not have access to. Um, and I think most of the schools don't have it because they're really expensive. Yeah. So if they have their library cards and they're doing a project um, at school that has a very new topic or mm -hmm. a very nuanced topic, um, instead of not being able to find a book at the library or using a Wikipedia page, they can go into these databases and find um, citable sources that they need that will give them accurate, up-to-date information. That's, and any anybody yeah. who has a library card can use those yeah. databases, but it's particularly useful for kids or anybody who's doing research for um, school. Yeah, or yeah. and so, like for instance, you know, a lot of us that get a little older, uh, you know, we get certain medical issues. And so, do you have medical databases then too? We do. Yeah, that we, is have, remarkable. we have um, consumer reports. A lot of people like consumer reports. Um, and the physical issues that we get don't always have the information they're looking for. So they can log into consumer reports with their library card. They can create their own comparisons if they're trying to price shop for something. We have medical databases. We have um, book recommendation databases. We have legal databases. I mean, anything that you could want quality information for chances are we have access to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now we have um, a bunch of middle school students doing reports. Um, they're supposed to do pro and con on mm -hmm. topical issues like... Um, the death penalty. The death yeah. penalty. <laughs> and we have two databases that have that. And mm -hmm. you, so you use those, and we do have books, but they're not as up to date mm -hmm. as our databases. Yeah. And we also, um, we loan a lot of e-content. Yes. So if you have a tablet or a computer at home or an iPod or an iPhone or whatever, you can get ebooks and e audiobooks. You can get TV shows. You can get movies, um, streaming or downloaded onto your device for I mean for a finite period of time, but you have access to all this content on our digital branch. Yep. Yeah, for instance, my, my friend and I, we love to go to the national parks, and so we make a little tour. And then she goes to the library and then loads up a couple of ebooks on her tablet. Yeah. So when at night we're, you know, eating in a hotel or in our tent, she, I see her tablet on and she's yeah. reading a book. I mean, I bring books because I still like books. Oh, of course. That, of course. <laughs> but so she brings her tablet. And um, so that I knew, but I didn't know about the database. Yeah, right. And, so, um, and, you can, and the movies yeah. as well. The movie's getting on your tablet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I get the DVDs, but no. This so, is see, these I need are digital. Little, I need I need a little education. Here, so I'm glad <laughs> that's why we're here. here. That's why we're here. Both of you Educate are here the today. Masses. Now we have a few minutes left. Sure. And so tell me, think about something that you really struck you in the years and a couple of years that you've worked here that really makes you feel that 
that's why I am with the Santa Cruz Public Library. Is there an experience that you want to share with all of us? I think it's not so much a singular experience, but working the desk or working outreach or doing programs and having someone come into you and refer to you by name is a surprisingly moving thing because you're actually bonding with the community. They know who you are as, as, and they trust you to um, provide them with information. You have to use your I know, I'm getting choked up. Um, <laughs> that's good, when I talk about my work. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so nice to know that you're making a difference to the community. And I, I do a lot of work with very young children and um, several years ago, I was eating lunch in a Mexican restaurant near the library that I worked with at the time and I heard this little voice in the, at another table and she was saying, that's my librarian. <laughs> she was telling grandma and grandpa and her parents. And I was like, aw. <laughs> <laughs> that really, I've had several experiences like that, but it just, as Jen says, working with people and um, making that connection. And that, of course, is what, what our program is about, making connections. Exactly. Making connections. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So um, you choked up. Yeah. And that's good because, you know, <laughs> to me, I mean, I mean, I'm old enough to know, you know, better. But uh, whenever, whenever it's bookmobile day, I, I like it. Yeah. You know, I actually, I am still able to go to the library myself and, and get on my bike and do that. Mm -hmm. But I just love it when they come. A, is because they bring us the books that we requested, but mm -hmm. also they bring us together. They yeah. bring us together. And the people that are walking with their little, you know, walkers, walkers. and all that, they are still able to come, and then we help them up the steps into the bookmobile, and they are still reading and absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all your work you do. Well, you're thank very you. welcome. Yeah. We enjoy it. It's good. Delightful. Excellent. And thank you for you at home watching this program, Connect, which you can see uh, on community television, Channel 27. And uh, we'd love to see you next time for another program, and maybe again about our library guests, Jeannie and Jen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. <laughs>